Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Microvision stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Microvision develops laser scanning technology for projection, 3D purposes, and capturing images. Their headquarters are in Redmond, Washington, and they were founded in 1993. It went public in 1996 and currently trades on the NASDAQ. They license their products primarily to manufacturing companies. The MEMS scanning micro mirror is the basis of its technology platform. The mirror swings vertically and horizontally to display an image. MEMS are involved in mobile projection, virtual retinal display, head mounted display, automotive and smartphones. MEM stands for Micro Electrical Mechanical Systems and is a scanning mirror with red, green, blue, and infrared lasers to project and capture images. The stock went up over 100% last month because of its new technology to be used on autonomous vehicles. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company. 1.9 billion market cap, they're trading at 12.21 a share, and they have 153 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future, and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has negative free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. They also have negative net income every year. Revenue is a sales for the company and that doesn't look so great. It peaked in 2018 at 18 million. In the trailing 12 months, it's down to 7 million. This is the company's income statement. They don't have an updated trailing 12 month number. They're using 2019. To get the most updated trailing 12 month number, I had to manually input it into my Excel file. That's why it's different than this income statement in Yahoo Finance. The top line of the income statement is the revenue. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Then below that is gross profit. Below that is operating expenses, then operating income. And the company has negative operating income every year. Also in the trailing 12 months, they have negative net income, negative 13 million. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they have negative free cash flow every year. It was negative 16 million in the trailing 12 months. The company doesn't issue much debt to run its business because it cannot pay the interest payments on the debt. So it's funding its business on capital stock. It issued 20 million in 2017, another 20 million in 2018, and 17 million in 2019. When a company issues capital stock, that increases the shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. Let's look at the capital structure. Negative $4 million of equity, that means their liabilities are $4 million more than their assets on their balance sheet and $3 million of debt. And their WAC is 31%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that's 2.4 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $809 million. We divide that by 153 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 527. They're trading at 1221. So they're trading at a 132% premium. It's a sell according to the model. In 2020, there were 6,700 autonomous vehicles made. That number is expected to grow to 4.2 million by 2030. The way I valued this company I assume they would sell their product to 3% of the autonomous vehicle market. And that's how I came up with the $2.4 billion of future cash flows. My calculated stock price is still well below what they're trading at. The stock price is not usually based off of how much a company's worth. 
It's how much people think a company will be worth in the future. This is a stock price the last five years, so you can see it was pretty flat for a long time. Then it got a big boost recently to its link to autonomous cars. This is their percentage increase in the month of February. They got up to over 200% increase at one point and they ended February with a 109% increase. They have a really high beta, 3.75, so the stock moves about four times the market. The stock has gone up 5,200% in the past 52 weeks compared to the S&P 500, which went up 40%. The 52 week low was 15 cents, the high was $24. And the stock is trading above its 200 day moving average but below its 50 day moving average. This is a really liquid stock. Between 12 and 20 million shares are traded each day. Of the 153 million shares outstanding, 145 million are on float, 9% are held by institutions, and over 11% of the shares on float are shorted. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you would have lost almost all your money if you sold a couple months ago. But if you held on, you would have been right back to where you started, a little over $10,000. The biggest shareholder is Vanguard, then BlackRock, then Susquehanna, State Street, and Invesco. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 8.5, the median is 13.7, PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. When a company has negative P.E., you look to the price to sales ratio. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 256. So investors are paying $256 for a $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They have negative equity, negative book value. So they have negative price to book. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income and negative equity. So we can't look at the ROE. Current ratios, current assets of current liabilities. They can cover 50% of their current liabilities with their current assets. Almost all their current assets as of their last published balance sheet were in cash. Last month, the company raised another $49 million in a stock sale. That should give the company enough cash to get through the next 12 months without diluting more stock. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry I've done videos of four companies in the same industry as Microvision, and Microvision is worse than average in every single category. So to summarize, I have them trading at a significant premium, but this stock price can go much higher. So if you're up a lot on this investment, you might want to take in some of those gains because the stock may drop, especially if some of the big investors sell their shares. It could take a few years for them to become profitable. Even if they have success with their autonomous vehicle market, that market is still small and developing. I rank their free cash flows 1 out of 10, their revenue 1 out of 10, and their ratios 1 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.